I have been asked about a leveling guide for some time now. And with the new season starting, I thought it's a great time to go over the basics. I will be playing as a Psyker. It's one of the hardest classes to start with. Mainly because you can die if you are using your spells too much. But this leveling guide will apply to all other classes as well. So don't skip the video. Before we start, let me mention the subclass choice. The only real big difference are the starting attribute points. You will always get 6 spread out differently over the 3 stats. So if you want to min max, then you can make your choice based on that. Otherwise make your decision based on which weapon you want to play with. But after playing for a bit, all of the subclasses will play the same. And in the endgame, the starting attributes aren't that important anymore. You can still easily max out any of them. Whether you start as a completely new player or you start with a seasonal character, you will see that nearly none of your skill trees and perks are unlocked. When you hover over the skill tree, you will see the requirement to unlock it. For the most part, they will just unlock while playing the game. Others need to be kept in mind, like this one for example. The same is said for perks. You can just have a look at the unlock criteria. And if you want to keep track how far you have progressed, then you go to Heroic Deeds. Here you can see how far you have come to unlock your skill trees, your perks and your attribute points. One of the best perks in the game is the Blessing of St. Victorious. So as soon as you have unlocked Void Crusades, try to finish 3 of them. With that perk your survivability will get a huge boost. I also recommend that you use a melee weapon. As soon as you find one with life or shield drain. Of course both would be better. Those two stats can only roll on melee weapons. Which makes them extremely strong for early game survivability. Once you have unlocked the crafting station and you have researched this tech power, then you can go into the modify tab and re-roll your engines until you get shield or life drain. But if you don't want to wait until you have unlocked that, you can just use the reroll all engine function. I made a character with a skipped campaign, but if you play the campaign, then just play the whole thing on the normal difficulty option. Anything higher is really a waste of time. With the skipped campaign, I also recommend to play missions that are on your level for a good while, until your defenses get a decent upgrade. So avoid playing the yellow and red missions. Let's now talk about a basic build guide. You want to apply vulnerabilities as soon as possible. They will be a cornerstone of your damage boost. Each stack increases your damage by 10%. But the way to apply them is mostly related to critical hits. As you can see here in the physical tree, in the heat tree or the melee tree. And it's also the same for this perk. So try to get a higher crit chance on your items as soon as possible. And as soon as you have unlocked the crit tree, I would put my first points here to get the 5% crit chance and this one to get healed and then put 3 points here to have a stacking supreme crit chance until you get a critical hit. And up here we get a flat crit chance. So go for that next. And with this skill in the middle, we can increase our damage by another 100%. So I really recommend to max out the crit tree as soon as possible. Applying warp vulnerability is a bit harder. But on a Psyker, where you have a lot of warp skills, you have the benefit of having the Psychic debuff tree. Once you have unlocked it at level 7, you can get the vulnerability skill. Then you can go to the Psychic power station, Go to any of your skills, click on the empty mastery slot and then you can socket the vulnerability inside here. Another insane skill that you can get really early on is in the movement tree. With only 5 points invested, you can get a huge amount of cooldown reduction with this skill. Especially once you have a good crit chance. So let me summarize it. You want to boost your crit chance on your items, unlock and max out the crit tree as soon as possible and get a way to apply vulnerabilities. The type of vulnerability will of course depend on the damage type your weapon or skills are dealing. So choose accordingly. But from here on it will depend on what you want to play as. If you play melee or ranged. If you use single target skills or AOE skills. You can click on the weapon you are using and hover over the skill. So you can see what tags they have. 
and then base your skill tree decision on that. The same is said for psychic powers. The attack adapt functions again a bit different. Here the skills from your constructs and your weapon skills are mostly separated. The same is said for the construct skill trees and the character skill trees. For the most part they don't interact with each other. So it's much harder to figure out what works and what doesn't as a beginner. So I won't even go over that in this video. I recommend trying out attack adapt once you have reached endgame with at least one other character. Since I'm playing a Psyker, let me go over a few important things so you won't be dying constantly in the early game. Your two main psychic powers are active ones that deal damage and produce warp heat per use and blessings. You can have three of them active at a time, but they reserve each 25% warp heat. So be very careful using them at all in early game. You might can get away having one of them active, but if you have two of them active, you will start producing warp anomalies. And especially if you start using your active psychic powers, the warp heat will increase rapidly. If you now have three of them active, you will see that you are nearly in the red warp state. So with only one use of an active psychic power, you will be already in the red warp state and producing lots more warp anomalies that can damage you. So I recommend having only one of them active at a time, so you can avoid having warp anomalies appearing at all. I also need to mention that any Psyker weapon can reduce the warp heat on hit. So don't forget to use those skills in between your spells, otherwise you will be soon reaching the yellow warp state. I have reached level 11 now, so let me go over some of the stuff I have picked. For perks I have chosen this one. You can get it very early on just by leveling up. And the increased movement speed will really help you out to farm the green missions or run through the campaign. I rerolled a melee weapon to have shield drain on it. I put a few points in the range tree to have an increased crit chance with my range skills. I put one point in the psychic debuff tree to get the before mentioned vulnerability skill. And I put 5 points in the psychic combat tree. This one allows my spells to have a higher crit chance and with this and this skill I can get a suppression and HP regeneration while having certain psychic powers active. It's a great way to get healing and suppression without using the inoculator. At level 10 I unlock the second mastery slot for my psychic powers and then I have chosen two psychic powers that deal warp damage which is the same damage type as my weapon deals. I also highly recommend doing the same on every class. Focus on one damage type. Don't split it up, especially while leveling. I'm using the before mentioned vulnerability skill, so I can apply warp vulnerabilities on hit. And then I discovered a new bug. The exploit weakness skill should increase the critical hit chance. But when choosing it in the mastery section, it says critical hit damage. So I don't know if it's a typo or it's actually bugged. But the principle stays the same. You want to apply vulnerabilities and you want to increase your critical hit chance. As my third skill I've chosen levitation which gives me another 25% movement speed. And when I'm applying this mastery it completely removes the warp heat cost. And with this one socketed I can get the HP regeneration while it's active. In my secondary loadout I'm using a staff because it gives me 3 open power slots. Which is perfect for blessings since we can only have 3 active at a time. So I can use my secondary weapon just for my buffs. Speaking of buffs, Misfortune is a really great early choice. It will help a lot dealing with armored enemies. And for masteries I'm using again the HP regeneration and the suppression regeneration. Another great blessing is the fury form. Which gives you a fire aura, supreme heat resist, a damage bonus and a heat damage bonus. So it's really one of the best blessings you can have. Again I'm socketing the suppression and the HP regeneration. For the last blessing I have warp speed, which gives me a weapon skill damage bonus and a 20% cooldown reduction for it. As I mentioned before, at the beginning I would really only have one blessing active. I would choose either the fury form or misfortune. 
And later when my defenses are better, I will have both of them active. And the last skill is just a free energy shield. I have reached level 32 now, so let me make a quick stop and go over a few things. At level 16, I unlock the Ether Blade, which gives me an amazing teleport ability with a very short cooldown. Also if you compare it to the teleport ability from the Ether Walker armor, you will see that this one generates 10 warp heat and has a cooldown of 1 second, but this teleport ability removes warp heat and has a cooldown of 0.6 seconds. So it's a much better choice. I also roll shield and life drain on my weapon. And for new players I also recommend only rerolling blue, green and purple items. Because their reroll cost isn't that high. Here you can see the difference in price on a relic item. At this point of the game I recommend rerolling some crit chance on your items. And the experience gain enchant. Which will make leveling up much more bearable. In my attributes. I put all my points in force to increase my damage when I'm at high warp heat and also increasing my warp damage since all of my attacks are warp damage based and I'm aiming next for the 5% crit chance. Because of the teleport ability of the ether blade, I now can easily escape warp anomalies. Which made me choose this perk so I get a 90% damage boost and this one. Which gives me a whopping 20% life drain in the unhinged warp state. For the third perk choice, I'm using this one, so the warp anomalies I produce have a higher chance to be beneficial, instead of damaging. For passives, I took the points out of the range combat tree and maxed out my crit tree. And I also put the points in the movement tree to get a reduced cooldown reduction. And with 3 points in the support tree, I can get HP for each warp heat gained. This one, in combination with this skill from the crit tree, allows me to always reduce and increase my warp heat and receive a bunch of healing even if I'm not using psychic weapon skills if you are using a melee weapon with shield and life drain on a crusader but you are still struggling with survivability there are also some passives and perks you can choose you will get the HP on crit skill on every single class so you can always choose this the support tree is also very easily unlocked so you can always reduce your cooldown reduction for your inoculator, making it heal you more and giving you a passive regeneration when it's on cooldown. With 3 points down here, you can also get HP when you are spending your focus points and with another 3 points here you can have a constant focus regeneration. So you can use those two skills to also get some passive healing. On a crusader you also get artificial organs 1 and 2 and augmented body 1 and 2 which makes the class one of the tankiest in the game. So you can just choose from those 4 perks if you are ever struggling with survivability. On the assassin, you can get healing and suppression gain from the accuracy tree, even more healing from the survival tree and HP and suppression gain from the bloodlust tree. So you have plenty of choices here. You also have access to artificial organs 1 and 2, so you can get a bunch of HP regeneration from that. You of course also have access to this skill, and you also have the same stuff in the support tree again. The HP for adrenaline points spent and the benefits to your inoculator. Of course there are also small things like this one in the melee tree or this one in the single target tree. And on the sororitas class we can get HP on kill and shield drain from resolve. We also have access to artificial organs too. The same HP on crit skill. More shield drain when we are using a banner and acts of faith that give us energy shield or even a passive HP regeneration. I wanted to mention that for the other classes. Because this perk on the Psyker is really strong. So is the combo of this skill with this one. But as you saw the other classes also have some solid early game choices. And of course later on you will unlock the health and defense tree. But we will go over that in a bit. For my active psychic powers I'm still using the same. Just now I have a third mastery slot unlocked. On the first skill I chose the shield drain mastery so I have even more survivability. On the second skill I reduce the warp heat and the cooldown. And on the third one I'm not only getting HP but also suppression regeneration now. But to be honest if you're using the ether blade you can exchange this skill now. You could for example use inferno or extermination. Both of them create columns of fire. 
and you can just spam and forget them. And if you're playing on a radical cycle, you can get this skill in the radical tree and make those columns of fire into warp damage. On misfortune and fury form, I put in the third mastery slot, reduced warp heat cost. This allows me to have some room to breathe if I have 3 powers active, so I can easier benefit from the increase and reduction in warp heat. For my third blessing, I've chosen endurance, which gives me more max HP and HP regeneration. Another good choice would be this one, which revives you if you die, without it counting as a real death. And in the fourth slot, I'm using the dome, which doesn't count as a blessing, so you can have it active on top of the other three blessings. It gives you a bunch of supreme damage reduction against ranged attacks. And if you socket the cooldown reduction and the increased duration, you can have it active a lot of the time. So I've just reached level 35, which unlock the Void Crusades. You will also automatically get 5 Void Shards, so you can immediately start your first Void Crusade. I now highly recommend that you rush for one of the Golden Missions. If you do a bunch of the previous missions, before reaching the mission in front of the Golden Mission, then you will have an extreme high base difficulty on your Golden Mission. So for example I would try to go here first, unlock this mission, with that the Golden Mission is at a set difficulty and it won't increase anymore. Then you can try out some of the other missions, to increase the loot rarity and quality. And of course to collect the info fragments and keys. Just keep your life count in mind. I will link this reddit page down below. Here you can have a guide of all of the Void Crusades. How to get the info fragments, how to unlock the secret missions and so on. As I before mentioned, I would now really try to rush 3 Void Crusades to unlock the Blessing of St. Victorious. You can also use the Treachery Tarot card to get more Void Shards. So you can just keep going Void Crusades. I've reached level 51 now, so let me make another stop. I put 20 points in the force attribute for the 5% crit chance and from now on I will put my points into resilience to increase my defenses. I haven't changed my perks yet, but I finished my first void crusade and I'm on my way to unlock the blessing of St. Victorious. I put a few points in the debuff tree to get some damage reduction and another way to reduce my warp heat. And with this one I also get a good amount of crit chance. With 3 points in the health tree, I'm now also getting suppression points when I'm reducing my warp heat. And somewhere between level 40 and 50, I start to invest points in the defense tree. And I would do that with every class. Especially for beginners, I highly recommend that you get all the resistance points from here and also the last skill, which gives you a second chance. With those points invested, your survivability will get a huge jump. Around level 50 will also be the time when you usually finish the campaign. So it's a perfect time to get those defenses, because you will have a much easier time in the Void Crusades. I would also start playing with this tarot card, so you collect more Psalm codes. And unlock this and this function in the tech tree. With this you have access to the forging tab, so you can start to socket and remove Psalm codes. And then I would look out to collect those codes. With that you can socket the ethereal sun doctrine, which gives you an insane amount of survivability. Another extremely strong sun doctrine would be the heat aura. It has so many benefits from applying debuffs, providing passive healing, because it also triggers your shield and life drain. And of course the damage from it will also massively speed up your clear time. For my items I'm using a warp bound armor now, for the extra spell slot and a psychic focus for the same reason. I also have changed some powers in my first loadout. I'm now using the Inferno spell that creates a column of fire and with this passive I can convert it into warp damage. The other spell is Constrict which already has an inherent armor breaking tag but it only deals damage if the target is overwhelmed or has no suppression bar. So on certain enemies you can really deal massive damage with this spell. The only difference in the second loadout is that I have access to the dome and the free energy shield now. My next goal is to unlock the blood balm by reaching the influence in the Balthar system, maxing out the defense tree and then probably putting points in the AOE tree once it's unlocked. At this point of the game it's also a great time to start looking out for items that give you enrage tokens like this one or this one. 
Of course you could also play with Berserk tokens. Both of them will give you a really nice damage boost, which allows you to start playing yellow and red missions. This is how the Psyker gameplay looks like around level 50. I've reached level 67, so let me make a last stop. The build is pretty much ready at that point, now it's only about fine tuning. Unlocking and investing more attribute points, exchanging one of the perks for Blessing of Sand Victorious, maxing out the AoE tree, the last skill in the defense tree has already been unlocked, and the rest of the points after the AoE tree will be spent somewhere else, depending on what I wanna do with the build. I have also found all the Psalm codes and socketed the Ethereal Psalm Doctrine. And in my weapon I'm already using the Heat Aura. You can also try to get this enchant on your weapon, which will pretty much cover all of your crit chance needs. At this point I also start rerolling enchants on my relic items to increase my survivability and boosting my experience gain. But I avoid really fine tuning my gear until I'm level 90. And for anyone who is confused, you really don't have to follow this build. You could easily exchange the skills if you don't like it. For example use Molten Beam, Firestorm, Inferno and Extermination. And then put points in the heat attacks tree. It will also perform really well. The Psyker has so many strong skills so you can just experiment with it. I made this video, so you have an idea what to look out for while leveling. Because if you are just following endgame builds, like my other videos, you will probably have a hard time leveling up as a beginner. So I provided you a lot of tips in this video to use on every class. But let me go over some of the most important points. Your starting class doesn't really matter. Find a melee weapon with shield and life drain as soon as possible. Run through the whole campaign on normal difficulty or just do green missions if you skip the campaign. You want to have a way to apply vulnerabilities and boost your crit chance. And also unlock and max out your crit tree. The cerebral feedback skill in the movement tree can give you a huge amount of cooldown reduction for only 5 skill points invested. Besides the crit tree in the movement tree, the points spent in your other skill trees will depend on your class and what weapon or skills you are using. If you are not getting lucky having shield or life drain on your weapon, look for some easy to gain perks or passives that will heal you. I showed you a bunch in the video. Besides healing, I would increase my movement speed with perks, passives or enchants to run through the campaign or early missions quicker. In the early game reroll enchants only on blue, green and purple items, because it is much cheaper. At level 35 you can start running Void Crusades. Try to finish 3 of them to get the Blessing of Saint Victorious perk. You can use a tarot card to get even more Void Shard drops. Around level 40 to 50. You will finish the campaign and at that point I would also start investing points in the defense tree. At level 50 plus, unlock the forging tab at the crafting station so you can start socketing your items. Look out for sun codes to get the ethereal and heat aura doctrine. Between 50 and 60, start rerolling your relic items and try to get a way to either get enrage or berserk tokens. I recommend enrage tokens for beginners. And at level 60 plus I will know what my build is going to be and I start investing more points into specific skill trees like AOE, single target, dots, melee and so on. So guys I hope this video was helpful. It was really a bunch of work. So if you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments down below.